Citroën C-Crosser is a unique car. On the one hand, if we love the French for something, it's for the original design. But the C-Crosser has practically none. It is a Mitsubishi Outlander clone, and Citroën also got a rather boring Japanese design. On the other hand, if we valued the Japanese for something, it was for reliability. And Japanese reliability, according to many, can only be a purebred Japanese, ideally, right-hand drive in general. How can she get a Citroën? Unclear. In general, the crossover in Russia turned out to be too difficult to perceive, and its sales were not very active. Maybe in vain? Let's take a look at what owners love and hate about their C-Crosser. It should be interesting. History of Technology the history of the appearance of the C-Crosser is simple to disgrace. It was first shown at the Geneva Motor Show in March 2007, but if you dig a little into the history of this car, you can find its mention even earlier. Back in 2001, Citroen presented a four-wheel drive concept car at the Frankfurt Motor Show. It was he who was then called C-Crosser. The joint car with the Japanese was supposed to have the name C7, but in 2006, the French changed their minds and named the new crossover after the same concept, C-Crosser. C-Crosser, as I said, is nothing more than a second-generation Outlander. To be quite precise, these cars share the Mitsubishi GS platform, but, by and large, both the C-Crosser and the Peugeot 4007 are so similar to the Outlander that you can rightly call them just clones of a Japanese car. In addition, they were also assembled in Japan at the Mitsubishi plant. And initially the plan was different. They planned to produce cars for Europe at the Mitsubishi plant in the Netherlands, which was built back in the 1960s for the production of DAF. However, it did not grow together, and these French began to be built in Japan. But for the Russian market they were assembled at the PSA plant in Kaluga. What was the C-Crosser? quite a large crossover which could accommodate the third row of seats this was its obvious advantage the choice of seven seat cars has always remained rather meager three engines were offered 2.0 liter 147 horsepower and 2.4 liter 170 horsepower gasoline engines which went to the frenchman from mitsubishi outlander and a 2.2 liter french turbo diesel 156 horsepower with Gearboxes could be mechanical 5 or 6 speed, and the F1CJA variator on front wheel drive cars, or W1CJA on all wheel drive, was combined with gasoline engines. All these are variants of the well known Jatco JF011 transmission. Suspensions are the most classic in front McPherson strut and the back multi link with anti roll bar. To be honest, the demand for this love child of the Japanese and French was not very great. In 2012, its production was stopped, and its ideological successor was the C4 Aircross, already built on the French platform. Nevertheless, you can still see the C-Crosser on the road, and you can also read what the owners think about them. They think, oddly enough, very differently. And about the same thing. Hate number 5, Corrosiveness let's start with corrosion it is strange that many people say that the c-crosser does not rust at all like there are chips there are a lot of them and the paint sometimes peels off usually from sandblasting from thresholds but there is no rust and at the same time a very large number of owners say just the opposite how it rusts for example chrome often fails the appearance of corrosion on the hood and on chrome parts six months after purchase and this despite the fact that the car was practically not used in moscow i.e the impact on the paintwork from any reagents was minimal yes it happens but rarely but they complain about rust from below much more often the bottom at the age of eight years was getting redder none of my cars had this Literally a month or two after the purchase, the muffler flange rotted away. After another year and a half, the last bank completely rotted. A fist-sized hole in the top of the muffler. So the metal is frankly not very good. Complaints about poor corrosion protection from below are the rule rather than the exception. In addition, not only body metal rots. There are situations that are even more interesting. Almost all the metal cables broke in turn. 
The owner is convinced that they just rotted. And he is not alone. The cables on many machines, for some reason, sometimes quickly rusted and torn. Sometimes problems with the paintwork became the subject of litigation. I sued 200,000 plus full painting of the car in six months. Under the guarantee, of course, none of the dealers was in a hurry to eliminate the shortcomings of the paintwork. But through the court, it happened, this was achieved. It's a shame that this problem so tormented some owners that some said, I will never buy a Citroen again. Well, Seacrosser is still not quite a Citroen, no need to blame all the dogs on this brand. Moreover, he himself never collected these crossovers. Love number five, Big Salon. Of course, most buyers chose the Seacrosser not for its beautiful eyes and French-Japanese origin, but for its interior. Let me first cite a few quotes that are full of enthusiasm, and then insert five copics of criticism. So, delights, a good transforming salon, the seat is very comfortable for my height of 187. One and a half thousand km, a sore back can withstand normally. The back sofa separately moves back and forth and the inclination of a back is regulated. There is a lot of space on the second row for leg semicolon, you sit quite comfortably in the back, the driver's seat has many adjustment functions, the dimensions in the cabin were impressive, what you need, five of us without any problems. And a little more about the trunk, the trunk is huge plus a folding door, there is no such item that I was transporting in it that would not fit in it, except for a 4 meter roll of linoleum that was placed on the roof rails. Everything seems to be fine, but no, I promised 5 kopecks of criticism. Chief criticism lies in the fact that the materials of this salon are not of high quality. This is especially true of plastic, which is easy to scratch. If a lot of randomly dumped cargo was transported in the trunk of a sea crosser, its plastic will not look its best. However, the interior plastic is also not much better, it looks cheap and scratches easily. Hate number four, liquidity. It's a pity, but it's really hard to sell the sea crosser. Most likely, the reason is that those who love Citroens will buy Citroens, and those who appreciate Japanese crossovers will buy Outlanders. And that's it, Japanese and French clothes, not everyone is ready to buy. Therefore, many write with regret that, the queue did not line up during the sale. Or like this, the price from the original cost of the car fell by 400,000 rubles. Now it's even unprofitable to sell. However, there are suggestions that now they will buy everything. And see Crosser 2. Love number 4, Ease of Repair. In general, the Sea Crosser is rated as a reliable car. Nevertheless, anything can break down, and no car is immune from this trouble. Most often, an electrician fails in the Sea Crosser. Many complain about failures in the operation of power windows, climate units, and other not the most important electrical components. There is, however, a variator, but more on that later. The main thing here is that everything that can break can be easily repaired. So people are happy, inexpensive, and easy to maintain and repair. In addition, it often helps that the Sea Crosser is still an outlander, so nothing Japanese is alien to it. Spare parts fit with Mitsubishi, so they are always in stock, and the non-original is distinguished by its availability and good quality. And many more refused Citroen dealer service, the cost of which often seemed too high. You can service the Sea Crosser everywhere, and those who know Mitsubishi are especially good at it. Now the opportunity to find any spare parts for this car looks especially attractive. Hate number three, ergonomics. Inside the Sea Crosser is a typical Japanese. Its ergonomics are ambiguous, and those who are used to European cars feel a little out of place in it. Let's see what exactly is being scolded here. There are many bad decisions here, and I propose to give the floor to the owners who know what they are talking about. Let's discard the uninformative interior ergonomics below the plinth and move on to the specifics ergonomics of the Japanese level controls. You reach for the seat control buttons, and your hand does not fit between the door and the seat. The power window and mirror adjustment buttons are not illuminated. If you need to adjust the mirrors on the move, even a little bit, you'll be tired of looking for the levers by touch. The steering wheel is not adjustable for reach. A little more, 
buttons for heated seats are located next to the seat belt buckle. I, even knowing where they are, and having looked before the trip on purpose, simply could not find them on the road. And the adjustment of the backlight of the instruments is next to the instrument scales themselves, and it is impossible to change something in motion, but sometimes it is necessary. And finally, my favorite, the right wiper looms about a centimeter above the windshield border, not critical, but annoying like in the eye of a soren. Not a moat, but a whole moat. Can you imagine how inconvenient such a solution is? Love number three, regular xenon light. Here again there will be love, slightly overshadowed by some details. Namely, the disgusting light of regular halogen headlights on Japanese assembled cars. But regular xenon headlights, cause everyone downright delight, staff xenon shines very well, a clear, even shelf, visibility is at a height, factory xenon shines well. I was very pleased that the author of one of their reviews scolded his car on three pages, but at the end he could not resist and added, all this, meaning everything bad on three pages, author's note, outweighs positive emotions from economy at a speed of 90 km slash h and good dip beam, factory xenon. The light must be really good. By the way, if we talk about efficiency, then not everything is so good with it. The consumption with gasoline engines, although not prohibitive, is not too low either. In any case, it is more often indicated in the cons of the car, and not in the pros. Hate number two, cross-country ability. Those who bought the C-Crosser as an off-roader made a big mistake. A large family crossover is not designed to need impassable mud. Usually they say about it like this, off-road qualities leave much to be desired, off-road capability proved to be quite limited. In fact, the problem is the same, hard blocking and imitation blocking are two different things, so you need to think before you poke your C-Crosser into pits and ditches. I was disappointed in all-wheel drive, I, of course, understand that you won't get into hell with an automatic, but a loud 4x4 with differential locks is clearly not about this car, yes, all four wheels spin properly, but it's worth hanging out alone, and you immediately ask question, did they forget to put a lock here? Well, or like this, there is four wheel drive, but it is completely helpless. When I arrived at the dacha, I caught a ditch with a wheel as a result, a diagonal, and I couldn't cope without help. Those who use all wheel drive just to avoid getting stuck in a snow covered parking lot in winter are happy with the off road capabilities of this car. And those who counted on cross-country ability, like the old Nissan Patrol, of course, are a little furious. Love number two, manageability. I will not give a lot of identical quotes here. I will limit myself to one. All-wheel drive helps a lot when driving on slippery roads. Even at a speed of 110, you can drive confidently. That is, the benefits of all-wheel drive on the C-Crosser are still there. I will add that many people like that the handling of the C-Crosser is closer to a passenger car and not to an SUV, which, in fact, is logical. Not Lancer and not C5, of course, but it is very confident on the road. In addition, many highly appreciate the work of electronic assistants, which do not allow to go into a skid. That is why almost all owners are sure that they drive a very safe car, and since the C-Crosser is usually bought for a family, this property is valued above all other advantages. Hate number one, CVT. Sorry, but I'm banal again. If the car has a CVT, it almost always gets it more than anything else. Exceptions are Audi and Subaru, but all the rest. Oh, trouble. The main problem with CVTs is overheating. Oddly enough, there are almost no questions about the resource. Some of these boxes drove without repair and more than 200,000 kilometers. But it is easy to overheat them, and they are especially strict about long-term movement at high speed. It usually looks like this. The automatic transmission is constantly overheating, as a message informs me on the scoreboard asking me to slow down. And if I don't slow down, then the car itself reduces it to 30 to 40 kilometers per hour. Now let's get to the heart of the matter. We read, the radiator that is installed does not cope. My box overheated in May. Observed once. The oil was changed and checked at the service. Nothing was revealed. But we agree that cooling is not enough. 
either put additionally at your own expense or demand from the manufacturer. At the moment, my box does not heat up, but during prolonged use during sharp acceleration, a strong howl is heard. Now we are clear, on machines until 2011 there was a separate variator radiator. The problem of overheating was encountered, but quite rarely and mainly for those who drove for a long time over 150 kilometers slash h. It is still a mystery to me where you can drive at such a speed for a long time, except on some toll highways, and, apparently, there were very few complaints. But since 2011, they stopped installing a radiator, and on the latest machines there is a conventional heat exchanger. And now it is already lacking for almost everyone. Those lucky ones who managed to get stepped deep and skid for an hour almost always had to sort out the box. Even the radiator did not save here. CVTs do not tolerate such an attitude. Love number one, motor resource. As for diesel engines, it is difficult to say something unequivocal. There were very few of them, and even at the time of preparation of the material, there were 59 petrol sea crossers and only two diesel ones on sale. But we can say unequivocally, Japanese gasoline engines, which are 2.0 liters, which are 2.4, delight car owners. Not dynamics, not consumption, but a resource. Here are a few figures, mileage 141,000. Nothing at all on the motor, 220,000, crosser 2.4, normal flight, I changed the spark plugs once. Mileage 215,000 kilometers. And if someone has to tinker with the electrics or occasionally repair the chassis, then they don't write anything about the motors at all, as if they don't break at all. The chassis, by the way, is also quite strong if it weren't for the tendency to sag in the back due to weak springs, then there would be a minimum of complaints against it. But motors are still leaders in terms of the number of positive reviews. Someone managed to drive more than 500,000, never doing engine repairs. For this, the C-Crosser is forgiven for a fairly large number of minor breakdowns. Like, all this can be repaired somehow later, but the motor is different. All hope is only up to him, he will take him on vacation, and on a business trip across the country. And he will always make it home. Unless, of course, the variator dies along the way.